Welcome to Against the Grain, episode 7, I believe. Yep. Yep. And I'm Andrew, and I'm with Daniel yet again. Yes, and I'm Daniel, you know. Yeah. This is, this is, what, I, this is what I sound like, so, you know. And today we'll be talking about It, the 2017 film. Mm. Yes, the and how it stacks up compared to the book and the original 1990 miniseries. Yes, exactly. Um um, but if, if you're listening to this and you haven't seen the film, you no, know, pause this film and go watch the film. Go on. Yeah, because we we'll probably spoil some stuff. So we're going to spoil a lot. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, but let, let's let's uh, let's talk about the start of it. Right, right. How it starts up. Um, I I I just want to say I think the scariest part of the film is actually the opening. Yeah, that was um, because that it, it was the first of many scenes that I thought, right? I know how they're going to film this, and they didn't do it the way I thought they were going to do it. Yeah, I mean, you. you I mean, I can yes. agree. Like you, you had your predictions of how they were mm-hmm. going to film it. Yeah, yeah. But it just it, it didn't turn out that way. Yeah. Okay. So to for, to obviously the context of the scene is that Georgie sent out with a, a paper boat, and he sees Pennywise in the sewer. Right. Mm-hmm. So in the book, it doesn't go into that much detail, but from what we can gather, Pennywise grabs his arm, bites it off, and Georgie bleeds out in the middle of the street. Mm-hmm. Uh, the miniseries, we also get the idea, but it cuts away before he bites off his arm. Yeah. Um, the new movie uh, <laughs> takes it to a very horrible extreme. Yeah, like he bites off Georgie's arm yeah, and then yeah, drags him. Yeah, you see him like you see like his his teeth. Like his teeth don't just turn sharp; like his entire mouth like peels back, and his gums like have teeth on them and shit. Yeah. And then he bites off his arm really quickly, and then you've just got this kid lying in the middle of the street screaming. Yeah. And then the arm just reaches out and drags him under, and I'm like, well, that that now nah, I'm not going near drains ever again now, you know. So. <laughs> I mean, in the book, uh, what happens is like Pennywise pulls George into the shirt and bites him under the armpit and takes his whole arm clean off. Ah, yeah, yeah. Like from the shoulder, but in this, it like bites him off from the elbow. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as you said, he bleeds out in the street. <laughs> um, but in the in this film, he gets dragged away. Yeah, that that was that was the beginning of one of many changes. Yeah. Um, no, 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 you know the, the the bit that really creeped me out is like, no, can you smell it, Georgie? The circus, <laughs> and I was just like, what the fuck. And he goes, um, no, there, uh, there's cotton candy and peanuts and hot dogs and and popcorn and popcorn. Is that your favourite? It's mine. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. <laughs> and then he just stops and his eye droops a bit and I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I, I like that. I, like, the thing with the eyes, like, that he could never keep them in place. Yeah. Um, because that immediately establishes that, like, um, that the clown is not its main form. Yeah. And I feel like that's a problem with the the original, is that that that's why like the ending of that loads people are like, wait, what the fuck? When it becomes a spider at the end of it, exactly. Because, because everyone thinks it's a clown with supernatural powers, and it's like, no, 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 it's this unspeakable, unseeable creature that just happens to turn to a clown every now and then, you know? Yeah, I mean, like the book really goes into detail and like, yeah, like yeah. Pennywise the clown, he rarely takes that form in the book. Probably yeah, the first five hundred pages, I'd say. I mean, the way they explain it is like, you know, you can't comprehend like his actual physical form in the physical world. You have to yeah, go yeah. kind of like a, into a, a spiritual world just to see his real form. Or if he like decides to like, open up his mouth and you see his dead legs, yeah. but you know. <laughs> um, um, but I, I think I think that can segue into. Um, from the opening scene, did uh, Bill Skarsgård just from the opening scene impress you? I take it then. It did. Mm. I mean, I didn't expect that level of kind of like. I mean, it it didn't really kind of creep me out. It just made me really uneasy. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it just made me feel like, what am I in store for in this film? Because <laughs> I was going in all excited, then that happened. I was like, okay, this isn't turning out exactly the way well, I planned it. Well, it doesn't have the happiest opening in like fiction history you know I mean <laughs> I mean it doesn't have really the most happiest whole kind of no it's it's not a happy story at all but like 
Um, the I was thinking though when I was watching the opening and all that, and because uh, I before I went to go see the film, I rewatched the first episode of the miniseries. Yeah. Um, just so I could compare uh, Bill Skarsgård to Tim Curry. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna say Bill. Scar- I'm not gonna say Bill Skarsgård is better than Tim Curry, but I'd say he's on par with Tim Curry. What what it is is that they both they're not the same character in my opinion. It's like it's like trying to compare Mark Hamill's Joker to Heath Ledger's Joker. It's like they are both the Joker, but they're very different interpretations of the Joker. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like, uh, I do agree. Pen- Tim Curry's Pennywise is very like, like you could believe that he is actually like a jolly clown, mm-hmm. whereas Pell Skarsgård one was kind of more like he's too nice mm-hmm. to Georgie. It's like you can immediately just tell like no, there's something not right with you, you know? Yeah. Um, and that kind of played into the aspect of how like he. Uh, he needed everyone. He needed all the children's fear and all that, and it's like that makes sense that he, like he's kind of this like, really happy it, clown. Yeah, like 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 he's trying to be nice, but he but he's also trying to be creepy at the same time, you know. Yeah, I I, I completely agree. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the thing, like with uh, Bill's to Tim's, you know that the the TV well the mini series or TV show whatever you wish to call it. Um, was back in a time when they really they were kind of constricted to visual effects. They, yeah, they yeah, couldn't yeah. do much with it, um, uh, and you just had this like great performance from Tim Curry as this really kind of happy clown mm-hmm. who who mocked the children and mocked the when and mocked them when they were adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it came to the point of like the battle, he turned evil. And mm-hmm. um, but with Bill's. You know, take on it. You know, he's this like really friendly clown who's too friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he, he uh, uses that against the children. Like he lures them in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they don't say it in the uh, the movie, but in the book they say like, why does he like he, he takes the form of what we're most afraid of, and then he shows himself as the clown. Yeah. And the reason he does it is because in their imaginations, what's the most evil thing? A comic book villain, you know? Hmm. And it's like so like that's his that's his like trademark. Yeah. Uh they didn't they didn't say that in the film, but like, because I read the book, that's why I kinda of thought it's like that's the reason why everyone sees the clown form at least once, is it's his trade it's the trademark. Yeah. Um though even though I loved this film, I, I thought it was a fantastic film. Mm-hmm. Um my only kind of issue with it is the pacing. Hmm. That's that's my only issue. It just felt like it was just, you know, set you know setting up kind of each of the children's kind of scares, if you know what I mean. Well, the book kind of does that as well. So. True, but I mean, but it's a film though. It has different pacing than a book, so exactly. Um, and that's what I kind of feel where, like the pacing was just a bit off, like not fully off. Um, yeah, I, I I think one thing that really bugged me was how like Mike gets introduced early on. Yeah, and he just kind of disappears for a while. Yeah. And then they just bring him back. It's like, wouldn't it have been more interesting to see like what he's doing during the time they're all like? And I know that's the way it is in the book, but even in the book, you don't really see any of Mike's scenes as a kid until quite later on. Yeah. You know? Um, but let's let's kind of kind of continue from uh from when Georgia gets taken in ah, into yeah. the sewer. I mean, what was it like when he did? When did he get taken in? Like nineteen eighty seven in this in the film. Yeah, and then and then it skips a. Um, just under a year in time. Yeah, and it you know continues on, and it's uh, the end of the school year. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and we're introduced to uh, Bill, Eddie, and Richie. Yeah. Um, compared compared to the original, um, do you think the act the child actors in the original were better, or do you think the child actors in this one were better? I believe the children actors in this one were better. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'd say overall they were, but at the same time, there's a couple of them I kind of prefer in the original. Yeah, um, um, I I preferred Bill from the old miniseries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that was the one I was thinking. Like Bill in the old miniseries, the kid who played him was actually really good. Yeah, and then this one, the kid, no, the kid was he was fine, but like I was like, you, the, he wasn't doing anything that was like making me go, oh man, that kid's actually a really good actor, you know. I mean, it wasn't until. Um, it wasn't until the point where he went into the the house for the first time. 
Aye, aye, aye. I mean that that scene kind of made me go, okay, he's he's playing a good character. Mm-hmm. Um, aye, aye. Um, I think the ones that were the the ones that I could say were definitely better than their original counterparts are the girl who played Beverly was way better. Yeah. Um, Richie was better, even though the, Seth Green was good as Richie, but yeah, I preferred this Richie. I will, I will I will give the film this like uh, Richie is my favorite character in the book, the mini series. And he's still my favorite character in the new one. Yeah, uh, it's like so that, that's good to see. Like they, get, it's consistent for all like versions that they've always got someone good playing the part. You know, exactly. Um, um, the the I, I, the I thought Ben was better in the original actually, but that's because I feel like Ben had less to do in this one. Yeah, I completely agree with it, you. It, it just it feels like half of Ben's dialogue was let me explain the plot or let me explain some more about Dairy or whatever. Yeah. And then, and then they kind of kept in this whole thing about Beverly and all that, but I'm just like, he, other than that, he doesn't really have that many like little character moments and all that. Exactly. Maybe other, maybe, maybe other than you know Henry trying to carve his name into his stomach, but yeah, he, I don't he, know. he just <laughs> he felt like more like a plot device than anything else. Yeah, yeah, like oh, we need Tim in the group, you know. Yeah. Um, I thought Eddie was better in the new one. Yeah. Um, he, uh, because. Like at first, I thought, "Oh God, I feel sorry for the kid that gets stuck with the Eddie role because there's gonna be coughing and wheezing the entire film." But no, like the kid who plays Eddie, every time something appeared in front of him, uh, the his expressions and all that, I was just like, "Yeah, I'd I'd look like that too, probably if that yeah. was in front of him." You know, it's like so he he was really good as well. Um, I, I like Stan, uh, the Stan character. Yeah, St- Stan. Stan was a bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, the kid in the original who plays Stan, I think he looks. More like how I imagine when I'm like reading the book, mm-hmm. but the kid who played him was kind of <laughs> underwhelming, you know. Uh, just just because like, every time he had to speak, he was just like, "Come on, guys, it can't be real." Come, it, it it felt like a child version of Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> like like, come on, guys, it can't be real. No, come on, what are you doing? Oh, come on, you know that's what it kind of felt like. Yeah. Uh, every time he opened his mouth, that's all he was saying. You know, it was. It yeah. was kind of like it was. He was the droopy of the group, basically. So yeah, um, Beverly. You know, well, yeah, it's, I, it starts off with like introducing those characters, and it kind of is like this nice kind of tracking shot into the ghost hall. It's where Beverly is um, smoking. Yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. have this like th- this little bully character, uh, and they you know they dump a, you know wet garbage over. Ah, yeah, yeah. Just you no, know, you know what kids are like. Do, do, I, I don't know. Did bullies ever do that though? I don't. <laughs> I don't remember ever hearing an incident about that in my school. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I, in my school, you, you know, they used to flush people's heads down the toilet. Yeah, disgusting. Uh, <laughs> no, um, but yeah, again, I'm forgetting. These are Stephen King bullies, though. <laughs> exactly. Um, for some reason, Stephen King stories. If you're a bully, you are the most evil fucking person on the planet. Like, like if you've ever seen Stand by Me. Yeah. Kiefer Sutherland, it's like, yeah, that is every Stephen King bully, like, ever. <laughs> it's like, you literally have no reason to go after these kids right now, but you're just an absolute psycho. <laughs> yeah. Um, which, of course, brings us on to Henry Bowers as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually prefer Henry Bowers in the original. I, I, I just felt like he, the original actor captured the uh, psycho aspect a bit better. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this one, he was just kind of like he just got kind of annoyed all the time. I like I, I like the parts when, well, especially at the end when he does go like full psycho. Mm. I like those parts, but these parts it just felt like you know this, you know, really arrogant person who thought he was amazing. Then his dad yeah, come yeah, yeah. down to size. Aye, but and that's the other thing. His the relationship with his dad is a big part of the book. Yeah. Um, and explaining why he is the way he is and all that, uh, and I don't know. And the and the fact that it all got reduced down to basically one scene kind of annoyed me, because in the original his dad is completely cut out of it, mm-hmm. and I, and to me it's just like that it was like a corner they had to cut, but it's like at the same time it's like it'd be better than putting all in one scene, you know? Yeah. And then this one did that where they just kind of had it in one scene where his dad's a dick to him and. Uh, and then immediately after he turns on his dad, and it's like, all right, you could have just you could have cut that probably, you know. Yeah, um, 
but let's get let's move forward. Uh, it cuts to Mike, I believe, taking meat to the butchers. Like yeah, yeah, and like the thing with the door. Yeah, and that kind of sets up kind of like how what he's scared of, but it doesn't really kind of explain it until midway. Yeah, it gets explained later that like it's because he was in a fire when he was younger. Yeah, um, which something that's something that annoyed me actually is that it explains both his parents died. Yeah, uh, his parents are alive in the book. I mean, it's, um, a, it's one of these things where they where they adapt it. I, I know, but at the same time, it's just my way of thinking is when. I thought his parents were kind of a necessity because his dad is one of the few normal adults in Derry. Yeah. Like, and it also suggests that his dad saw it back in, like, the 20s or the 30s. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Or was it the 40s? I can't remember. But, uh, he... No, it was the, no, it was the 20s or the 30s. But he, uh... So, like, I always... I always kind of thought, like, you need that kind of element to show that, like, not every adult is out of their mind. Yeah. Uh, or like ignores what's going on but eh, it, it was a corner of the cut so you know see I mean that's the thing I mean is it his uncle that's a farmer yeah 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 I mean I felt he was you know just you know the typical kind of farmer character ah, yeah. which it was like stay away from dairy mm. don't you know be an outsider because you know something bad will happen if you continue you know to be in dairy yeah 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 um, and I did like that part um, but I don't know just there was characters that they didn't kind of flush out fully uh, Yeah, I, 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 I get the feeling that they're going to flush out more in chapter 2 yeah well Mike will prop has potential be fleshed out more Yeah, because so, he's the one that makes all the calls and all that when they're adults yeah um, um, then it comes I mean, what, what, isn't, it, isn't it Stanley afterwards at the synagogue I think so. Or, yeah. or, or do, or no, or do they go down to the, uh, or is, do you see Stanley at the synagogue first, or do they all go down to the uh, sewer first, and the pipe, and find the shoe? I think it's a uh, synagogue. Are you sure? Because uh, Stanley's with them at the pipe, and they've just left school. Uh, oh yeah, then it is. yeah, 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 yeah. So and they find the shoe, and they like Ben's getting chased by Henry. And is it Patrick goes into the pipe with like uh, a spray can and uh, a lighter? And yeah, he thinks he's gonna he thinks he's gonna torch them, and then he comes across zombies. Pennywise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he comes across Pennywise, and that was terrifying. <laughs> um, but I mean, the parts with Pennywise being in it, I thought they were fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about the. One of the funniest scenes that I've I've seen in the film later on, uh, but let's can kind of continue from uh, this part. I mean, this is the part where the group starts to like fully getting together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so you have you have Ben, you know, being protected by the loser group and being welcomed into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, then they go to the the pharmacy to pick up bandages because you know. Yeah, they walk see up his wound and all that. Yeah, and then. Yeah, Ben's, uh, Ben's been got, uh, has got like a H carved into him by Henry. Yeah, because Henry is a fucking psycho, so... Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, and uh, Beverly helps them, like, steal stuff out of the pharmacy. Yeah, and the creepiest part in these films are either with Pennywise or with the adults around Beverly. <laughs> Once again, if you're a middle-aged man in a Stephen King story, you're probably a paedophile. So, like, yeah, I mean, it's just a, it, <laughs> it's just the way, like you know, the pharmacist, you know, kind of goes, "You look like Lois Lane," and it's like, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah, right after she told him, "You look like Clark Kent," you know, it's like, it, it's like, oh, please stop now, please, no, no, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to watch this anymore, no. <laughs> Then it cuts to you know Beverly meeting up with the the loser club, uh, loser club, no, the loser club, should I say? Losers, losers club, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know they're saying thank you for getting the bandages, and they would invite her to the the quarry. Mm-hmm. Then she goes off, goes home with you know her uh, her pads, her period pads. 
um, yeah, yeah. and goes home. Where and, her creep, and her creepy father, you know. Yeah, where again uh, you have another weird adult. What, what, what the the thing is though, like I feel like they played up his creep factor a bit too much. Like, like, like I always feel like with like, um, if if you think about like people who are like abusers in real life, the idea is they come across as very shockingly normal. Yeah, it's because of like what what they do in their head isn't wrong. Mm-hmm. So like seeing like the character, he was just a full on creep. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like there was nothing subtle about it. What's in the book? It's subtle, I think. Yeah. Um, because like he like he beats the share over in the book, but like it, n- nothing ever flat out seems to happen in front of anybody that suggests he's like touching her or anything. Even though her mother says to her on point, "Is he doing anything or like that?" and she doesn't know what she's talking about. So yeah. Um, but in this, he was just like, "No, no, he's just no, you, you, please, no, please, no, what, what, uh, don't, don't, don't be in." Don't be in this movie, please. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have yet another uh, Peter Fail, which is mm-hmm. Beverly's father, and I don't like him. He's a bit of a dick. Thanks, Mister King. You know. Yeah. Um, so it goes on, and they go to the quarry. Aye, aye, and they all want to like jump in the water. Then, of course, you know the badass girl comes in, and jumps in the water first. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, ah, shit, we gotta do it now. <laughs> We just got showed up by a girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then that's kind of like the the starring of like their group of like the they're all gonna they're, they're all just want to have fun during the summer. Exactly, but but, but, pe- but Pennywise is such a an issue. <laughs> but that's <laughs> the just, thing. Um, I mean, they they don't really know about Pennywise at this point, do they? No, they don't. Um, I thought. Um, doesn't yeah Stanley and Bill should know about him by this point well Bill, 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 Bill has the thing with the uh, the photo album is that what happens to him in this one or or no no it's the basement no, it's the, the no, basement. they change they change that, the basement and Stanley has the thing with the painting yeah but that you know you, they don't really know about Pennywise yet <laughs> they just know you know that was weird um um, well, but we haven't talked about the the bit in the basement yet because that's a wee bit kind of further on. Yeah, yeah. For some um, for some reason, I, I was getting mixed up with the original. So yeah, but in in this scene where they're at the quarry and they're in the water and just having fun, um, it kind of plays. It kind of this is kind of like beginning of uh, Beverly and Bill's kind of little relationship. Ah, yeah. With Ben being like the jealous kind of outsider kind of thing. Well, it's funny in the in the book, he's not actually jealous of Bill in it. Mm-hmm. He's he's actually more jealous whenever Richie tries anything. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because, like because he thinks he's like on equal footing with Richie, mm-hmm. but he can't be jealous of Bill because he thinks Bill is like the leader and all. That he says it makes sense that she would like him. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. Where so so, but they still tried to do the whole little love triangle in the film and all that. But yeah. Um, but it does show kind of like the relationship between Beverly and Bill and that's it's kind of like one of those you know as kids do like they look at each other and they kind of like you know the other looks at them and they look away quickly ah yeah um, and that was a nice kind of thing the funny scene uh, was when like Beverly's just sitting like lying there on the stone and they're just looking at her <laughs> And it's like, yeah, typical teenage boys, you know. <laughs> um, then it goes on. Uh, then I kind of like dig into Bill's, Bill's Ben's bag and finds out like all the research of Derry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, we didn't mm. talk about Ben scared, did we? Yeah, he 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 saw Pennywise in the library. So yeah, I mean that was a cr- that was creepy. Just how like the 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 boy moved. Yeah, they uh, they changed that from the book. In the book, Bill's like walking home from school, mm-hmm. and during it's just a it's winter, uh, and well, it, it it makes more sense in the film to have his scare by Pennywise happen like closer to when it happens to everybody else. But in the in the book, it's he explains though during winter I came across him standing in the canal, mm-hmm. and then he and then like a, a mummy charged at him. And came out of the water. Yeah. 
So so they changed that. Um, the in the original miniseries they had that actually. Yeah, they did. Where like he's standing in the water and the mummy like comes out of the 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 kind of like I don't know I like, get just like the edge the of the bog, water. So the yeah, bog. yeah. Um, I mean, you had the mummy part at the end, but we'll go into yeah, that later yeah, on. Yeah, that was like a little Easter egg, basically. So yeah. Um, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, there's a lot of like little Easter eggs to you know, kind of going towards the book and the old miniseries. Ah, yeah. Um. Then the, where does it go from there? Um, after the quarry, they go to Ben's house. Yeah, yeah. Which is just kind of like, you know, his house. He's, yeah, and he's got like in his room, he's got like pictures all across the wall, like he's a detective hunting down the serial killer. It's... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's just kind of like you know, it's his own kind of personal project. Um. And he has a new kids in the block poster as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, funny. Well, I mean, that's the thing, you know, typical, kind of little kid. Yeah, it's like it's like when, like when when you're like a teenage boy, it's maybe like lame to like boy bands. Yeah. But let's face it. I mean, there was probably at least like one boy band every guy listened to that they thought, you know, I actually don't mind that song or something. So I like Bastard Boys. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I like Bastard Boys. Um. Yeah. But then it kind of continues on. As I said, the pacing was a bit kind of off because mm-hmm. it went from scare to scare kind of thing. And it had like these kind of like 10, 15 minute snippings of to, like bringing up the story kind of thing. To, to be fair, the book is all like that too, though. Yeah, I know, but it's, 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 it's very episodic. Like, oh, here's how Eddie came across Penny Guys. Oh, here's how Richie came across him. Oh, here's yeah. Ben came across him. Um, you know? And I understand, like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a long book. It's try to get ah, the yeah. pacing of the book right for the film well they, a, they were they were very wise to cut it into two films so exactly I completely agree with that um, and uh, you know you have these kind of like moments where you have to kind of think is this going to be good on screen or is it going to be look, uh, is it going to look terrible on screen yeah because the they changed uh, how Pennywise attacks Mike mm. in the book he gets attacked by a giant bird yeah and I actually was like thinking like oh man I actually kind of secretly hope that's in the film <laughs> because he because in like the first half of the book he takes the form of the bird more than he does the clown I think <laughs> I mean that's like, the thing he takes he takes a lot more of forms than the clown in the book but in here he takes more forms of the clown because that that's the iconic uh, ah, character yeah, it's, what, it's what people are expecting you know exactly um, um, but you see so, him kind of change throughout the film. Yeah, yeah. Like they, as as I said, or it's like you, you didn't feel like a, a clown who had supernatural powers. They really properly made it like, no, this is like an otherworldly thing. Yeah, that his mo- his motif is the clown. You know, exactly. Yeah, I completely um, agree. It's 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 his calling card. You know. So yeah. Um, but I mean, I. I... <sighs> So it, it can it kind of continues through there, and we get to see more kind of uh, like the jump scares. Uh, we get the the bit with Eddie at the house on a new is it New Ball Street or yeah. New Ball Street? Yeah, yeah, where he comes across the leper. Yeah, um, that was creepy. Yeah, that was in the they kept that from the book. That's in the book. Yeah. Um, uh, the only thing they change is how he comes across the leper. Mm-hmm. Is in. In the book, he like goes under the porch, yeah, and it crawls out from under the porch and starts chasing him and is offering him a blowjob for fifty cents. Yeah. Whereas in the film, they changed it to no, he's after his medicine. Uh. And any and then he turns into the clown, as like his little like, uh, <laughs> get you next time, kid. You know. So yeah, it's like that. Just kind of like you know, it's getting late, Eddie. <laughs> if you stayed here, you'd be home by now. <laughs> um, so, something I'm thinking actually how many how many times did Pennywise in this film actually tell people they were going to float not a lot yeah because because like if you think about the original like, every time he pops up he's like you allow float kids and it's and uh, I used to think the floating was just kind of like metaphorical mm. for, for, for like death or like going to the other world or something no he, it was like, kind of like a, but, a hibernation yeah. thing 
Yeah, where but then like the the film they probably like, show like oh no the, he's actually got like bodies floating in the sewer. <laughs> yeah, which kind of like adds to the whole like this per- this things from another world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he has this little like hub in the sewer. Yeah. Um, um, where does uh, right? So it goes from there on. Uh, no, Eddie's leper. Uh, and uh, Beverly also with the uh, the sink as well and the yeah, blood coming out. I mean that that. That whole kind of explains, and um, like you know, she's scared about this because she's becoming a woman, mm-hmm. and that means uh, bad things uh, with her uh, with her father uh, with her father. Ah, yeah. Um, but it does kind of after that when the whole toilet, uh, uh, the whole bathroom is bloody, you know, and her father comes in and doesn't see anything. Yeah, that kind of yeah, yeah. like as more. No mystique to Pennywise himself. Yeah, it's like it's, the, the adults can't see him or see anything that he seems to do or anything. Yeah. And it explains why none of the adults seem to do anything because either they can't see him or, like, maybe if they are aware of him, they're just ignoring it, you know? I kind of get the feeling that they know something is going on. Mm-hmm. But to what I've taken from the miniseries and the book, is like once you reach a certain age you forget but it's not like you completely forget you know mm-hmm. something it's kind of like something's in your your thingy view what do, what do you call it the, or what do you call the your side view that you kind of see off to the side well you mean like your blind spot or yeah it's like there's something there but every time you look mm-hmm. it's gone it's that kind of thing where it's like you know something's there yeah he's he could be in your blind spot, but you got to turn around. You know, it's yeah. like he's not—he's not within your uh, perspective of reality, basically. Exactly. So, That's the way I kind of see it. Is like you know, you know, he's there, but they don't really kind of understand. Yeah, yeah. It's kind—it's—it's kind of. It's, it's kinda, uh, let's see. See the part in the book where they're explaining uh, Stan's part at the beginning of the book. I think it's like yeah, chapter yeah. three. Um. And uh, they're explaining his nightmares. Ah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know he knows something's happened, but he do- he can't kind of put his finger on it, kind of thing. Yeah, because um, he's like the only one that like uh, when Bill comes forward to all of them in the book and says like I need to talk to you guys about something. When they get around to Stan, say, "Did you see anything?" He's just like, "No, I didn't see anything," and he, he quite clearly has seen something. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. I, th- I think I think the idea is that Pennywise like he goes after children because they have the most fear and he feeds off of fear, yeah. whereas adults don't have the same kind of like like I mean of course adults are going to have fears of things but they don't have the same uh, fear of basically everything that children have. You know, I mean that's the thing. In Ch- the book, children, it... children children get scared of really stupid things. You know, yeah. so I mean in the book it kind of explains. Uh... Like why it makes him scared first because mm-hmm. like the fear tenderizes the meat. Mm-hmm. Um, but in here in the film, uh, to what I noticed from the film to the book, is that it, Pennywise in the book can still kill people even mm-hmm. if they're not afraid. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, but in the film, he can't. Yeah, they they um I think the reason they changed that um because in in the book it's he doesn't go out he doesn't go after people like even though he probably could get like adults all that are aware of him all that he doesn't really go after them because he can't get the same thing of fear off them they can children that children taste nicer to him yeah but in the film I think the only reason they changed it so that no 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 you have to be afraid of him to actually be about is about they change that because they also change the outcome of how they kill Pennywise mm-hmm. like um, if you've seen the original miniseries you know they uh, get some silver slugs and a slingshot yeah. and the idea is it's the classic monster trope of like silver kills a monster mm-hmm. um, whereas in this they just beat the shit out of him but like, <laughs> I mean I kind of prefer it's... this one where you know well it, it was it was satisfying to watch yeah I mean but, and but... and the miniseries it's, it kind of explains like if they truly believe enough they can harm him mm-hmm. and because they also 
because they're like obsessed with like movies and all that they believe that like you know silver's a thing you use to take in a monster and because yeah. of that that is his weak because they believe that's his weakness that is his weakness yeah where well, I kind of um, preferred this one where it's like you know they literally beat him but but at the same time though uh, I don't know if I do prefer that Really? Uh, I mean, one, I, I, no, I kind of preferred it. No, no. On the one hand, it was satisfying to watch after all the shit he put them through mm. and killing like Bill's brother and all that. But at the same time, um, he in 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 the book and in the miniseries when they fire the silver at him and like take off a chunk of his head and he like runs away and all that, uh, and they all leave the sewer. Um, the idea is that they think like that. Okay, there's a fifty fifty chance he after running away he's he's gonna die or something, you know? Yeah. Like uh that's why we all gotta come back in case one day that like he isn't actually properly dead and we got and we gotta come back and do it again. Whereas I feel like that they just beat the shit out of him and I'm just like, how is that gonna kill him? Yeah. <laughs> like he's like he's maybe this cosmic entity and all it takes to kill him is just Richie beating the shit out of him with a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> like and it's not even a baseball bat he brought with him. He just finds it and the sewer it's like, Bill, I gotta kill this fucking car now and it's like, What? Um, <laughs> and that's what you're gonna use to kill him. <laughs> but let's talk about the ending a wee bit later. Let's continue. Um so after Anyways. like so after like kinda like them going through different fears well, of the fears of the the children, um, they 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 start properly know like they explain to each other that they've been seeing the clown. Ah, yeah. Um, and of course, Stanley doesn't want to actually prove it's real because it that it doesn't line up with how he views the world and all that. Exactly. Um. So and they, and they get Mike in the group after having the rock fight with Henry as well. Yeah, that that part that sh- uh, scene with Pennywise in the grass. Mm-hmm. That's got to be one of my most favourite scenes in that film. Because it's just like, he looks up, sees Pennywise, then Pennywise is just chewing on a hand and starts going, waving at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that bit was like, huh. <laughs> that was that was weird. <laughs> um, so, you know, you, you have yeah. like the full loser club finally, you know, they're all together. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they get all the photos and all that. Yeah. Uh, now this is a scene I want to talk about because um, <laughs> they did it differently in the, in the the book. Yeah, in the book, and, if, if you've read the book, you know that uh, it's Richie that's scared of the big uh, lumberjack that's in the middle of town. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of like an Easter egg towards that scene. Yeah, yeah. So, but in the book and the miniseries, they get Mike's photo album, and Pennywise appears on one of the picture, or he appears on a dozen pictures, but there's one where the picture comes to life. And he jumps in the lamppost and he looks at them and he tells them he's going to kill them all. Yeah. Um. So when I was watching the film, and they're go, but the, and they've also changed the full album to a projector, and they're going through all the photos and all that, and then all of a sudden the mother's face is like covered, and underneath the hair it's Pennywise and it keeps fucking you know there's no photos turning up in the actual projector, mm-hmm. and they're like screaming turn it off turn it off and what what I thought was going to happen was I thought they were going to do. He was gonna pull off the hair or whatever, and he and he was gonna start moving in the projector screen, and he was gonna do the same kind of speech where he's like, oh, "I'm gonna kill you all" and all that, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the the reason I thought they were doing it on a projector is because uh, the joke everyone makes the when watching the miniseries at least is that like when he's like talking, he's like, "I'm gonna kill you all," and it you, you're just like, "Why isn't Mike just closing the book?" Yeah. <laughs> like, why doesn't he just? Like, poof, and you just hear Pennywise underneath going, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in this, so like the projector's going, and I was like, all right, okay, he's gonna, he's gonna jump out, and he's gonna be like, yeah, yeah, this is, I'm fucking Pennywise, bitch, you know, <laughs> um, but instead, they knock the thing over, and it's like flickering, and then all of a sudden, a giant Pennywise jumps out of the projector <laughs> with his full on. Like monster teeth, and he's like, and the and the screen keeps cutting to black mm. while they're all trying to open up the door, and they're all screaming, and it's like, okay, well, that's not something I wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> and it, that was not what I thought was going to happen, you know. I didn't think the, it was going to happen. I thought he was just going to like appear in mm-hmm. the garage instead of being massive. There, there's, there's a, that's just like, but to be fair, that kind of 
that kind of played into like a personal fear of mine though really is like uh, I, I get I get really freaked out by like you see if you see something that's like like for instance if you took like a spider like a normal size spider yeah I wouldn't be scared of it I'm not actually that afraid of spiders mm -hmm. but if you made that spider human size it'd be fucking terrifying very so true. so taking Pennywise who's a normal human size and putting him up to giant size scares the shit out of me for some reason <laughs> um, it's the it, it's, it's, it's it's the same way I don't I don't find it scary anymore but when I first like saw Attack and Titan I thought the Titans were kind of creepy oh yeah so they're like abnormal like giant humans with really creepy faces they they don't really scare me anymore because they are stopped trying to make them look that scary as the series went on but no like, that's the thing it wasn't that it was just the it's that it's something that's not normal, um, uh, and it makes you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, it's it's like I'm not used to seeing it look like that, you know. It's, like that should be normal size, and it's not normal size, you know. For example, and I'm going to use this, and, and a lot of people are most likely going to be extremely angry at me for saying this. It's like a trip, a trypophobia. It's not it's, it's not a phobia. I I, I I hate calling it a phobia. All right. Um, it's the fear of holes. All right. Okay. Um, and what it's kind of referring to is like holes on skin. Ah, right, right, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's you're not scared of it. It's just it makes you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I'd be yeah. uncomfortable seeing that. I mean, you know, I the first time I looked up, I was uncomfortable with the pictures I I saw. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't kind of scared. I wasn't scared of them. It just made me feel uncomfortable because ah, it's yeah. kind of. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's. Right? I am claustrophobic. I I hate large spaces, and um, with a lot of people in them, I hate it. I it makes me panic. Mm -hmm. Um, I I hate large areas with a lot of people in them. It makes me wouldn't, feel like I can't breathe. Well, uh, wouldn't it be scarier though if it was a small space with a lot of people in it? I mean, no, it's it's almost the same thing. All right, well. Um, but I I hate that. I hate big areas with loads of people in it. It's. That's why I can't go to like concerts anymore. All right, well, because it, it freaks me out. I need to leave because it 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 doesn't freak me out. It it just kind of like I can't breathe. It's like people are taking you no know, air and I can't breathe. Ah, yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, so it's 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 one of those things where it's like it just makes you feel uncomfortable. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's something that's abnormal. Yeah, yeah. And it just makes you feel it kind of like sends shivers down your spine. Mm -hmm. um, so after this scene of the, the giant Pennywise Bill goes off to go find Georgie who still believes he's alive oh and th th this leads into like another big change in the film mm -hmm. is that the Losers Club all have like a falling out yeah uh, I hated that honestly really yeah because uh, it, felt like, it felt like cheap drama basically Mm. It's. I actually think the pacing would have been better had it just been like, this thing isn't going to stop. We need to all go down to the sewers and take it on. You know. Mm -hmm. Instead, they had to that big movie thing where they all mope around for ages, wondering like, oh man, life sucks now and all that. And I'm like, ah. Uh. <laughs> um. And and instead, the reason they have to go down to the sewers because it kidnaps Beverly, and it's yeah. just like, it it just it just felt cheap. That's. And it didn't. They didn't need that in the original in the book, and they didn't need it in the original Mooney series. You know. Yeah, I it's, mean, I mean, let, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the house first. You know, when they go into the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's get let's move on to uh, the part where Bill just saved Richie from the clown room, where yeah, you um, get to see a nice Easter egg towards uh, Tim Curry's Pennywise. Yeah, because one of the dolls looks exactly like the old Pennywise. So. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to that, uh, where Pennywise is just coming out of the fridge and he's like twisted and everything, and, and, he, he, and Eddie's arms broken as well. Yeah, and like, he and he's like, you know, toying with Eddie, ah, yeah. to make him more scared. And Bill finally goes, "This isn't real. Oh, this oh, isn't no. real." Oh, you, is this also the bit with the three doors as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, where uh, scary, very scary, not so scary. Yeah, <laughs> and they, and they hanging child. Yeah, with her legs cut off, it's like horror. Like that, that, that's like how you do horror comedy. <laughs> yeah, you know? like um, set up a situation that's actually that's kind of funny, 
and then give it like the most horrifying outcome you possibly can like the punchline is like that wasn't funny you know yeah so so this point where Bill has literally went this isn't real we need to stop being afraid I like the part where Pennywise just kind of look behind him like no something was wrong yeah like bitch what did you just fucking say <laughs> exactly um, <laughs> and then this whole like this was like the first battle with Pennywise yeah they actually try and fight him a little and Beverly stabs him through the head so yeah and that was creepy as all hell yeah and he's got his eyes are just all like over the place his mouth has grown out of the side and all that you know what was a nice kind of like touch and I don't know if anybody else liked this but I liked it it's like whenever he bled his blood floated up ah yeah that was pretty cool as well So I liked that I, I really liked mm. that um so after that scene, you know the whole thing where they split up and they go their separate ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really hate this. In this day and age, they shouldn't have the whole, you know, the 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 white knight going to rescue the damsel in distress. Yeah, as as I said, like in the original book and all that, it's like they didn't need that. They didn't need the cheap drama. It was just no, that this isn't going to stop. More kids are going to die if we don't do this. You know. I mean, it was what? that. That's why it was kind of heroic. Whereas in this, is just like, guys, we gotta save Princess Peach. She's been kidnapped by Bowser. <laughs> I mean, that's what it felt like. So, I mean, what I kind of would have preferred is if, you know, instead of them, ta- you know, instead of Pennywise taking one of the other, one of the loser club, mm-hmm. like more children just start going missing, like ah, just yeah. you know the random kind of. Yeah, that's that's all you need to do, you know. Just have have him like escalate his killing spree or whatever, you know. Yeah, and because his time has come to an end, where he's going to have to hibernate, mm-hmm. and they know if they don't get to him now, they will they'll, ha- they'll never have another opportunity. Basically, so exactly. So you know this whole thing where it's like say bows you no. Know, Checking the missing pages, and after like the the split, they you know, Richie shows up. Ah, yeah. And they meet up, and they just kind of like look at each other. And they know what they need to do. Mm-hmm. Because if they don't stop it, then more, more kids are going to go missing. I would, I would have preferred that. Um, instead of like them taking you know Pennywise taking Beverly because the whole yeah, yeah. damsel in distress thing. Um, yeah, and it, no, no, and it also pissed me off because up to that point she was like the strongest of the entire group. Exactly. It's like now she's getting kidnapped, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um. But I mean, it kind of explained the deadlights. Yeah. Well, it, well, what I liked was there was no exposition about what the deadlights were. It was just there. But then that also brings another problem: is that um, uh, Henry comes into play the this. Yeah. Where Pennywise starts talking to him and he ends up killing his dad, mm-hmm. and Pennywise is telling him, "No, you need to kill the children now." Yeah. Um. So, in in the book and the mini series, he falls them down to the sewer and he like kind of chases them for a while. Yeah. Until Pennywise gets to him and it's Henry. It's the one that sees the dead lights. Mm, yeah. And that causes that causes him to go caca. Yeah, caca for cocoa puffs, you know. <laughs> so he he um. And then that leads on to like when they're adults and all that, he's like throwing a mental hospital and he got the blame for like the murders yeah. and all that. I um, Whereas in the in this new one, I think he died. I don't think he died. Yeah, but how how would you survive that? <laughs> I don't think he died. No because I, I think like, not only does he get pushed down a very big well you also see like his head smack off the side as well he'd break his neck or crack his skull at least you know I mean that's the thing he was still yelling all the way down hey but yeah but I mean like you would it's a well Um, (laughs) there's not really many places for sound to go (laughs) but I don't think he is dead I think well no well obviously like he had there's a place for him in the next movie yeah but I just feel like they could have left his character off in a certain place where there wasn't like this confusion where I'm like that would that would kill him, you know. I think you know when he whenever wherever he is in the sewer, that's where Pennywise is at the end mm. of the film. Um, so do you think it's going to be one of these things where like he he's not going to be in a mental hospital? He's going to wake up at the same time as Pennywise or something? 
I wouldn't say at the same time. I think oh. like you know he'll wake up like you know after falling from the well and he's gonna see Pennywise, you know, mm. just like beaten. And Pennywise is gonna go, uh, is gonna t- show him the deadlights and tell him, you know, this is what you're gonna have to do. Yeah, but but at the same time though, does that mean Henry waits twenty seven years to do that? Or you know, like he goes up to the surface after, like you know, the kids the mm-hmm. kids are going to tell uh, police where the children are. Ah, yeah, yeah. So that's going to you know they're going to like find Henry come out of the sewer, and that's when he goes, "I it was me that did it." All ah, right, okay. You know, um, that, that, there's the other possibility is that he is dead and he's not going to be in the second one at all they've cut his entire subplot out mm. because when when you think about what does his subplot in the book amount to in the adult part True. is that he, he stabs a guy mm. and then they hit him over the head and he dies it's like you probably could cut that out you know Yeah. Um, um, but that, that's going to continue uh, so, uh, so, they, uh, so, uh, so Stanley's somehow randomly put into a different part of the sewer I don't know how yeah. that happened well because um, you know oogity boogity powers and all that you know yeah. like and he get this explains like his this is going to explain why he's so thingy and why he kills himself as an adult mhm um you know he was less he was almost eating uh, well well there's a there's a thing they leave out well I'll explain later on that they left out of the book that kind of annoyed me that kind of like wheezed that kind of cliffhanger open you know yeah uh, so they save him and Bill runs off because he sees Georgie mm-hmm. um, and what I found hilarious and what I was ex- what I was really hoping was going to happen is the part where he shoots Georgie mm-hmm. oh was that you, you thought when like I actually kind of thought the same thing Mm-hmm. It's when like Georgie comes. I was waiting for you, Bill, and he pulls the gun and goes, "You're not Georgie," and he shoots him. Yeah. Uh, did you think it was actually he was Pennywise had kept Georgie alive? I thought I, I actually, really like, did. Just killed Georgie. And I was expect like, I was expecting like Pennywise to appear and go, "What the fuck?" Like what? You weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and people called me sick. Yeah, and he, and he was giving like I was planning a family reunion. <laughs> like, and it's like turns out there was like an entire surprise party and all that. Like. So he was actually doing something nice for them. Yeah, and that, like. that's what I was kind of expecting. I was kind of like, you know, this whole. And I was well, like. No, like, I, I thought that would have been like a pretty dark twist, <laughs> but, at, but, at the, but at the same time, one, I read the book, like, if you read the book, like, Bill at that point knows George's dead, like, they found the body and all that. Yeah. It's, it's the film that had the idea that, oh no, he might just be missing, you know, which. Yeah. I, I think is, I don't think it's a great change, but I'm like, eh, whatever, you know. Um, but, you see, but you need to remember though, like the, the wait. Obviously, I, I was obviously thinking the same thing. Where it's like, well, if that's actually George, he just shoots him, you know, <laughs> thinking it's an hallucination. But um, you're forgetting this was not directed by the Koreans or the Germans. <laughs> so, like, if it, if this was a Korean or a German film, that's what the ending would have been, you know? Yeah. Where um, like, there was no Pennywise Bill. It was all an hallucination. You just killed your brother. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so so that leads on to so they they've saved Beverly and I don't really want to talk about this part because I I don't like I, I don't like the whole damsel in distress thing. Ah, it's stupid. So um, in this day and age, that it shouldn't be a thing, especially um, when it wasn't in the book either. Yeah, so. exactly. Especially if it wasn't in the book. Um, and it, yeah, because like, yeah, because in the book she's the one that's actually good with the slingshot. Yeah. So there, she's like integral to like bring into the sewer with them. Mm-hmm. Whereas so, by, by making it that Pennywise kidnaps, like you just completely took away that element from her character. You yeah, know? you made it. You you went from like this really badass uh, girl character to this whole like girl character who needs to be saved. Mm-hmm. Um, where it it wasn't needed. Um, uh, that was that's my whole thing. It wasn't needed, not in this day and age anyway. Ah, yeah. Um. It just it just kind of adds to the whole kind of stress of uh, this whole sexist thing going on nowadays. <laughs> um, but after that whole thing, you know, Pennywise reveals himself, and then the whole big battle happens. And I felt the, ba- um, the big battle was actually quite good. 
Um, my problem with it is it did that unfortunate thing where like um, either the actors involved like it could be it could be one of two things either the director isn't comfortable shooting action or the actors involved aren't convincing enough in a fight yeah because well, they did the thing where it was all kind of close up and there was very quick cuts yeah like like the Taken films basically yeah or, or Batman Begins because Christian Bale's costume was like so heavy he actually mm. couldn't move that quick so the way they shot all the action was very close very quick cuts to make look he's moving really quick it's the same in Taken as well it's like Liam Neeson's like in his sixties, so he can't actually move that quick. Yeah, but they got me quite quick. No, he's like still got it, you know. It's like, uh, um, so I don't, I don't know if it's the director wasn't covered, which I, I don't think it's that, because the direction for the entire film was very good, mm. um, and very creative. Whereas, so I think it's more like I think like the kids just didn't look great. Uh, doing the fighting, so he had to resort to the close up and the quick cuts and all that. Yeah. Um. So after the whole fight, you know, Pennywise is, you know, beaten down and he's scared. He's scared for the first time. Ah, yeah. Um. And you know, if you've read the book, then you kind of get the feeling that you know, it, he's this is the first time he's felt fear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. And he always kind of, you know, after this part where he, he escapes, um, you get this kind of feeling that, you know, it's an ego thing with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he, he thinks he's God, basically. So. Yeah, you, and this is the part where it's kind of like shrinking uh, shrinking him down to size. Ah, uh, yeah. The, the only thing that kind of bugged me with how he dies, though, mm-hmm. and this is, this, is, this is the personal gripe, but uh, lots of films and TV shows do this is when he's hanging off the edge of the well mm-hmm. and you see him like he's crumbling apart yeah uh, I think it would have been a lot more cooler if he just looked up at them and he st- he was crumbling apart and he falls down and he just go and he like screams or something yeah instead they had to that bullshit thing where he's looking up at them and he goes fear <laughs> and then he then he falls down and like god why like they did, they did that in uh, Game of Thrones recently as well Mm. Where like Daenerys is looking like I've not I've not actually watched all of the season, but like I've seen that one scene where she's looking at the map with uh, Tyrion and they're looking at each other, and then she just suddenly goes, "Shall we begin?" And then it cuts. It's like you could have just had them be silent and then cut, and it would have been much more effective. I mean, I, I can understand why he said it. It's like you know he's uh, hanging off the side, <laughs> and he, it, it's like he's hiding mm-hmm. and he's muttering to himself, and then you know, he starts cracking away, and he, then he kind of goes. Uh, Instead of going, so this is fear. He just kind of like, you no, know, he he stops his eyes and goes, fear. And yeah, but go. It, yeah, but it just it just feels like it felt like it was like they were. It's, it's like, like it, it felt like it felt like uh, here's what this scene means for the dummies out there, you know? Yeah. For anybody who can't understand what Pennywise is feeling, let's just have him go fear. <laughs> um, right. I, I would have preferred that like there was a laugh at the end when he's fallen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, or like the children to go, you know, is he dead? We need to make sure. Yeah, because that, that happens in the miniseries as well, where he goes down the drain and Bill starts, like, getting a bit manic. He's like, no, we have to go down and make sure he's 100%. And they're like, no, Bill, we've got it. We've, we've done it, you know? Yeah. Like, um, so I would have preferred if something like that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but that leads on to Bill finding George's jacket. Mm-hmm. Which, and they all gather around him and give him a group hug and all that. Yeah, which kind of like you know confirms that you know George is dead. He's gone. Yeah, I mean we kind of knew that, but you know. No, no, but still, that like you know, it, it's to give him closure, I guess. But yeah, you know. so that leads on to uh, you know the next scene where it's all sunny and they're all sitting around and they make their promise. Yeah, yeah, and they all cut their hands open and stand around the circle and all that. Yeah. Um, they this is this is a change from the book. Um, is that in in the film, Bill's the one that goes around with the glass and cuts their hands. In the book, it's Stanley that does it. Yeah. And what happens at this bit is he cuts all their hands. Then when he gets around to cutting his own hands, he actually looks at his wrist first, mm. and actually is going to cut his wrist until Bill's just like, "Hey, what are you doing?" You mm. know, he's like, "Oh, sorry," and then he cuts his hand open. Yeah. So like, I, I feel like they should have kept that in. True. Uh, 
but no, in, instead, it, it, I, 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 because, because it would be a last minute stinger to show like, how scared Stanley really was, whereas I kind of feel like at the end they were all kind of like an equal footing with what happened. Yeah. So it's, uh, well, we'll see, we'll see. But. So, I mean, you know, that's the end. They make their promise and it shows up you know, at chapter one. Yeah, yeah. So, which I, I thought that was a good idea, um, marketing the film as it and at the end reviewing, no, this was only part one, basically. Yeah. Because if they marketed it as chapter one, I don't think as many people would have gone to see it. Mm-hmm. Because there is there is actually this thing where, where, like, even if you like intend a film to be like this is the first chapter, a bigger story. Yeah. If you tell people that, they'll actually be like, "Well, I'm not going to see half a film," you know. Exactly. Yeah. E- even even though it is a full film, people will think because it's got part one, they'll think that's half a film. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas I feel like the film, it's it does stand on its own, but yeah. it's left room for a sequel. So it's like that. That's that's the way you should do it normally. Yeah, I completely um, agree. And the only thing that kind of annoyed me was there's no actual end credit scene. The only end credit scene was the laugh at the end. Yeah, you, you see the laugh at the end. So that, that's can, probably that, that's probably all you needed. But you yeah, know. which kind of confirms that it's still there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I mean, I, I, altogether, I'm giving this this film uh, a nine, a nine out of ten. Cool. I mean, um, I, I like the film. I'm going to buy it when it comes out in uh, Blu-ray because I, I I thought it was a fantastic film. Yeah, I'll do the same probably. Um, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of mm. 10. Um, as I said, really liked it, but just some of those like uh, per- personal gripes with changes and then the whole changing why they venture into the sewer, I didn't really like that. Mm. I don't see why they couldn't have just made it. More children are going to be missing and we need to do something about it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's like that wasn't compelling enough, you know? Mm-hmm. No, guys, we gotta save the princess, you know? It's like, ugh. <laughs> no, no, I completely agree. Like, um, I was almost expecting Pennywise to take the form of Bowser at the end of it, you know? So, yeah. Like, com- and Bill has to, like, grab the axe at the end of the bridge or something, you know? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, but- no, but seeing as we've been recording for the past hour and five minutes let's bring this to a close we we agree with that it was a fantastic film mm-hmm. yeah I would say it's definitely better than the, the yeah, miniseries exactly and I'm looking but, for but and and, and, uh, and I do I do think Bill Skarsgård was very good and all that but I don't think you're going to be forgetting Tim Curry anytime soon though so no you're not but I mean nah. that wasn't the whole thing it wasn't to forget Tim Curry aye, the, aye the, the both performances stand equally on their own you know I think so mm-hmm no, no, but altogether, fantastic film. Looking right. forward to the chapter the, two. Chapter two. If you haven't seen the film, go see the film. Go read the book. Go. Re- if you haven't seen the miniseries, go watch the miniseries. If, if, if you haven't seen the film, why did you listen to us? You know so. <laughs> exactly. If you, if, if you haven't seen the film, then or if you don't plan to go see the film or read the book or <laughs> watch the miniseries, don't listen to this. Um, but. I, I am looking forward to the second one, but at the same time, though, I don't know. I I I fear it's gonna have the same stigma the miniseries had, and that the second half is as interesting. Yeah, I, I even feel that in the book that the stuff with the children is more interesting than when they're adults. But hey, you never know that. That um, I, I feel like there's only room for improvement, pretty much. So you know. I mean, there is. There really, really is. Is but that's the thing. We'll we'll see because um, this chapter two won't be out until two thousand nineteen. Ah yeah, so we have we have time to see it, um, and I'm looking forward to it, and I'm going to keep myself updated with everything that happens. I definitely so. So we're going to bring this episode to a close. Uh, you know, again, if you if you like the the show, please like, please share, please subscribe. It's all free, you know, and just make sure you keep listening to us, please. Mhm. <laughs> I would agree. Yes. So. <laughs> And again, I'm Andrew and I've been Daniel. And we'll see you again in the next episode. Roll credits. Oh. <laughs>